Back in high school, I had a friend named Rob. One of my closest friends, Rob was in a constant battle with depression throughout his years in high school. While I didn't have to personally deal with depression, I was with him through a large part of his struggle, and I myself had to deal with chronic stress and anxiety. Depression, stress, and anxiety are all things that we've all had to deal with in one way or another. Whether it be helping a friend or family member through their darkest times, or whether we had to fight our own battles over and over, we've all faced it. We can all relate to it. It's no secret that Lordran, the land that Hidetaka Miyazaki's grim epic Dark Souls takes place in is nothing if not dreary, hostile, and oppressive. This is a land filled to the brim with monsters and the cursed undead, who wander aimlessly after having lost their way, their drive, given up, and turned hollow. It's easy to just sit back and take Lordran at face value, easy to look at the game's hardships as purely the result of design choices, and easy to look at it as nothing more than a game. And while it is certainly true, I can't help but see more than that. To me, Dark Souls is more than just a game. It's an allegory for depression and the hardships of those who face it on a daily basis. Rob once described his depression to me as fighting the same battle over and over again with less and less drive to do so. It's a constant cycle of facing the same enemy over and over again, only to lose some of yourself each time. In Dark Souls, specifically Lordran and the world around it, there lies something similar, though it manifests itself in a very different way. For an unknown reason, there was an epidemic among humans. An unknown but assumed large number of people were cursed, branded with something called the Dark Sign, and turned into the undead. Immortal, in a sense, these cursed undead are fated to roam the world for ages. Anytime one dies, they're brought back to life by the mysterious powers of the bonfires that are scattered around the world. As an undead loses their drive or their purpose or their goals, they begin to hollow. Much like many of those who face depression on a daily basis, basis they gradually lose themselves. To be hollow is, in essence, to have lost any real sight or recollection of who you are, and in a way, accepted your fate. A hollow is frequently found doing what it did in life. Soldiers will be soldiers, commoners will be commoners. For many, they simply sit around and stare at something, or they stay where they were when they lost themselves. Essentially just a shell of who they used to be. They have no purpose in what they do, they simply do it because it's the only thing they know, maybe even the only thing they remember. The player character is one of the undead, though their fate is vastly different than that of the mindless hollows. They are chosen, and will face hardships and trials beyond that of any other undead in this lifetime. As with depression, the chosen undead will fight the same enemies over and over again, and each time the player gets revived at a bonfire without success, they grow more and more hollow. There are two main ways that people handle depression, and two main ways that people defeat Dark Souls. Some choose to go it alone, either trusting in their own strength strength or simply not wanting to be a bother to others. The rest will decide to call on the help of friends or strangers, gaining strength by having those friends or strangers by their side. Those who opt for facing the challenges solo will undoubtedly have a harder time without the support of a couple of friends. Depression is unforgiving. It's constantly pushing you, constantly throwing you to the dogs, and it does not hold back. It's vicious, uncaring, and apathetic all in one. At times, with both it and Dark Souls, it feels as if it wants you to break, wants you to give up. At those hardest times, the chosen undead makes a choice. They either accept defeat and give up, or they use the challenge as fuel for their fires. With both, despite how difficult things get, each battle can be won and each step forward can be made. Now, none of that is to say that Dark Souls is entirely relentless. If it were, nobody would play it. Instead, Dark Souls achieves a very precarious balance. For all the times it beats you up, it has something to encourage you. Usually it's the adrenaline from finally beating that boss or getting past those few enemies, but occasionally it's in the shape of non-player characters that always seem to have some words of encouragement. In this way, it differs immensely from depression. Dark Souls flex the world with characters for you to meet, each with their own backstory and reason for being in Lordran. These characters and their stories are an almost constant presence throughout the game. The majority of them simply mind their own business and go about whatever it is they're doing, but a few of them actually encourage the player to press forward, serving as small bits of light in the dreary world of Lordran. In this way, Dark Souls provides the player with a support system akin to having a friend there to cheer you on. While you're not constantly around these characters, you see them every now and then, and three of them in particular are remarkably happy or cheerful, all things considered. As I've said before, not everyone has or chooses to have support 
support in their fight against oppression. But these characters all serve to be the same kind of support one would get from friends at your side. One character, Laurentius, genuinely cares for the chosen undead. After you save Laurentius from being trapped in the sewers, you find him at a shrine. He's always happy to see you, and he says something that's really stuck with me. Goodbye, then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go all day. This may be the best line in Dark Souls, and it makes it clear that your fight, whether against the beasts of Lordran or against the beasts of depression, is not a fight that you need to have alone, and there's always some place or someone who truly wishes the best for you. I hadn't realized how truly important that line was until recently, when I was sitting down and playing through Dark Souls to reminisce. It brought me back to Rob and how it helped him deal with his depression, and honestly how Dark Souls had helped me learn how how to handle my own problems with stress and anxiety. When I met Rob, he was in what could best be described as a rough patch. On top of having to deal with a recent and major loss in his life, he also had to struggle to keep up in school while maintaining a job, and the combined stress and pressure was putting him in a very dark cycle. He was fighting his own battle over and over, and he was doing all that he could to keep himself afloat, to keep his light in sight. I forget exactly how or why, but Rob started playing dark Souls. At the time, all I knew about it was that it was supposed to be insanely difficult in that it just didn't pique my interest. But Rob? Rob loved it. For the next few months, it was almost all he'd talk about. He spent hours, days on that game, and eventually he got me to try it. It was around that time that the semester ended and he moved away. After a couple of years, he came back to visit some family he still had in the area, and we met up. Immediately, I noticed something different about him. Rob was happy. We ended up talking about his battle with depression. He told me that he would still have terrible, terrible down days, but Rob assured me that not all of his days were bad. After moving away, Rob went through some very intense times and was in a darker place than before he'd left. He knew no one in this new town, and he'd left all of his friends behind. One of the ways he fought depression was by distracting himself, and Dark Souls was his favorite distraction. It offered a challenge, and it became a constant source of drive for Rob. It gave him a goal to pursue. He told me that he hadn't been able to find the right words to describe his depression, but had recently decided on a select few that really did the job. Rob told me that his depression was like fighting the same battle over and over again with less drive to do so. He told me that even though he was fighting the same battles every single day, he hadn't given up and he had no intention of going hollow. For myself, Dark Souls had ended up serving a similar purpose. Though I wasn't suffering from depression, it helped me learn how to handle my anxiety, stress, and anger. I approach things very differently now, and though I still have trouble, anytime I'm in a rough spot, I can always go back to Dark Souls and it will always help. To this day, I'm thankful that I ended up playing it. To this day, it holds a special place in my life. Dark Souls is easy to take at face value, as nothing more than a game that's hard for the sake of being being hard. For some, it's so much more. For people like Rob and myself, it's more help than anyone else was up for offering, and it ended up being more than enough. Those of you watching this that suffer from depression, I want you to know that there's always some kind of hope in that you don't have to do this alone. There are people you can talk to who can help, and they're probably closer than you think. I hope that all of you find your goal, a purpose, or the support you need to overcome that next challenge or to just take those next steps forward. Good luck to you all, my friends. Don't you dare go hollow.